In this video I'm going to show how I made a test rig to improve my electromagnetic accelerator coils. I went back and measured some of the performance figures of the ring accelerator I made from a previous video. It goes about 30 RPM and has a radius of about 3.5 inches, which gives a velocity of 0.28 meters per second, resulting in a kinetic energy of about 2.5 millijoules. So with a coil pulse time of 50 milliseconds and 12 volts at 6 amps, that results in an energy input of 3.6 joules, which is less than 0.1% efficient. That's pretty atrocious, and I think we can improve it. To do this, I'm going to build a device that's basically a coil gun attached to a speedometer, and I'm going to test different coil setups on it. I'm using this infrared LED and phototransistor to create an optical sensor for detecting the metal ball. This works better than visual light because the brightness of your surroundings won't affect the sensor. These little feet with the hex nut inside them will make it easy to switch out different coils on the test rig. This bottom plate holds the infrared LEDs and also makes sure they're lined up with the path of the projectile so that they'll detect it. I'm going to build two more infrared sensors, but instead of using them to trigger the accelerator coil, these ones will be used to measure the projectile speed. The LEDs will sit below the path of the ball and the phototransistors will sit above it. When the ball interrupts the infrared light, it'll trigger the sensor. By knowing the time between the two sensors being triggered, I'll be able to know the speed of the projectile. Here's the schematic of the control board for the test fixture. It takes in two 6-cell lithium batteries and puts them in series for a total of 48 volts to power the coil. On the 28 4-volt side, there's a voltage divider that pulls the gate of the coil triggering MOSFET up to 12 volts, and then an infrared LED and phototransistor uh, keeps it pulled down until the light's interrupted. And then we also have the uh, sensors for our speedometer and a 16 by 2 I squared C LCD and an Atmega 328 chip to control all the logic. And now here's the circuit for the coil itself. Um, there's two voltage dividers coming off the high and low side of the coil, and those actually feed the analog inputs to that mega chip to measure the pulse current. So let's try a coil at 48 volts without any modifications. My efficiency is still really low, but just by going from 12 volts to 48 volts, I've increased it by a factor of about 8 over my previous ring accelerator. To see how I can improve my efficiency, I'm going to use some simulation software. I used a program called FEM 4.2, which stands for Finite Element Method Magnetics. This is a free program that lets you model magnetic systems and determine things like field strength, pull force, and a ton of other really useful stuff. I knew that a core in the middle of an electromagnet coil increases its efficiency, but I wanted to see if the same idea worked with a ferromagnetic shell on the outside of the coil, and according to the simulation, it does in fact help, so I'm going to try it out.
Adding washers to the end definitely made a noticeable difference. Now I'm going to add steel sidewalls. I don't have a solid piece of steel that fits, so what I'm going to do is achieve a similar effect by wrapping the coil in steel wire. Wrapping with steel wire didn't make as much of a difference as adding washers on the front, but it definitely still helped. Now I'm going to completely encase the coil in a magnetic shell by having washers on both faces and steel wire on the sides. According to the simulation, this should improve performance by a factor of 4. While I'm skeptical of that prediction, I do still think we'll see a big difference with a full shell. Now my coil is completely encapsulated in ferromagnetic material, so let's try it out. So here's the final figure. A full magnetic shell improved efficiency by over 50%. Now just for fun, I'm going to see what a two-stage coil can do. I didn't double my kinetic energy like I'd hoped because I lost some energy to the friction of a longer tube with two stages. With a faster projectile, this would be a smaller portion of the overall energy. Let's see how my simulation predictions compare to my actual observations. Here I'm going to run a script in FEM that calculates the pull force of my electromagnet coil for different distances. As you can see, the simulation gives an extremely optimistic estimate compared to my actual results. I think this is because the magnetic shell in the simulation is a perfect solid, but the one I built has a lot of gaps and voids. So I made a more realistic model of my coil and simulated it to see how it compared to the others. In this model I've tried to account for the gaps between the washers and the coil ends, and also for the voids between the individual strands of steel wire. Just from looking at the heat map, you can see that the field strength through the realistic shell is much weaker than the perfect one. This is because magnetic flux doesn't cross air or vacuum nearly as efficiently as it travels through ferromagnetic material. Now let's look at the difference between the perfect shells and the realistic one. As you can see, there's quite a drop. The simulation estimate is still higher than what I measured, but I think the difference comes from eddy current and friction losses. But here's the bottom line. Adding a magnetic shell increases efficiency at least 50%, and that's enough to make it worthwhile. Now let's knock down some blocks. Stay tuned for the next part of this video series, where I'll apply these improvements to a new ring accelerator.